Hello and welcome back everyone. Hope you've had a wonderful week where you made some time to be creative. It always makes me feel great. So this week I wanted to go through a little bit of practice leaves for you. They're really wonderful things to do. I've taken some photos here, good reference, just for some colours and for the markings as well. But it's going to give you a little bit of understanding about the nature of different colours. I've drawn up three leaves. Um, hopefully you can see them, but it doesn't matter if you cannot because I'm just about to wet the page now and you will definitely see them once I start adding some colour. I'm going to do this leaf and I'm starting here with yellow ochre. I'm not looking to identify, oh, sorry, identically copy this leaf by, by any means, uh, just to actually watch and learn how the paint moves. So I'm, I'm going to go into my warm red, which is my orangey red. And while that's wet, I'm just gonna put it down in a few dots. More, obviously I've got a wet brush here and the paper is quite wet. Now the reds and the ochres are very similar um, in that they are a heavier, grittier pigment and you'll find that they settle quite quickly on the page and don't run and move. Whereas when we get around into yellow, uh, it's quite different and you'll find that yellow is the sprinter. So I'm adding that. Now if it looks too purplish, which this does to me, um, what will I add? Well, I could add yellow or a subtly yellow ochre. Because remember yellow and purple sit opposite each other on the colour wheel so they will cancel out each other's brightness or vibrance, something looks too yellow and you want to dull it down, you would simply add purple. But remember the power of the pigment in these paints, they're highly pigmented paints, which means they're very rich colours if, if you've got good watercolours that you're using. Uh, so just remember that if you want to affect a colour, they go in very, very subtly first and then you can expand it from there. I'm going to let that just sit for a minute. Um, over here in this side here, I want to add in my green. So I'm going for my green that has a lot of yellow in it. And what else would it have in it? Well, it's got a touch of blue to make it a lime green. And as I said before, yellow is a great traveler. It's a very light pigment. And if you have a green that's mainly a yellowish green, that means that it is still a very light pigment and will travel really, really well. If I get into a heavier green, uh, now this to me is still a very yellowish green, but maybe darker, it will travel less. So I'm just going to put a few little dabs in here. I might go into just getting a brown. And a brown is, is a good colour. It's quite a heavy colour usually because it is a tertiary colour. And that means it's got all three primaries in it, which means it's the lazy traveller. It wants to stay sitting on the train, not really interested in doing that 5k hike on the sightseeing option. It's quite a heavy colour that just sits where you put it um, because it's made of all three colours. There's many versions of these colours, so I know that it can be confusing. But the main thing is we'll build your knowledge of what colour does and the personality of colours over the videos that I bring to you, if, if you're still <laughs> liking it, that is. Um, but it means that with my... I've been working s specifically with colour since 1987 uh, and painting in my career up to 200 paintings a year and it was basically to perfectly match the colours out of the Dulux Master Palette which has thousands of colours 
and for each colour that I was given by the client, I had to make up a, sh a sun, sh sun shade and shadow version of that colour and to be extremely ap ap accurate. Anyway, my paper's getting drier now and I'm liking that because I can go in here, sorry about the reflection, I can go in here and get some little tiny uh, purposeful little marks and character spots, perhaps damage, age on the leaf. Remember the three pot plants that we did um, as the page dries? So that's kind of like the middle technique where you've got purposeful marks and the paint is not running away into the border of another country or across the border of another country. You are making it stay where you need it to. This is also the time for me to add in more vibrant red. I might go for a redder red. And again, I can pop that in and drag it and be much more purposeful with where I want that red to sit. It's not just up to the page to take it on a little journey. I'm organising this trip. You can go there, but you can't go there. I just want to thank everyone who's sticking with me. I'm loving the fact that I'm getting some return commenters. Um, it, it makes me feel like what I'm doing is being helpful, which is my main purpose. When I give you my ideas, I guess, and my knowledge, um, it's it's not to be bossy, it's really just to uh, impart tips and tricks that I wished I'd known when I was much younger. Uh, starting out in watercolour, I feel that it would have made things a little bit more easy or relaxing for me, and that's what I'm hoping for you. Now, I'm going into my warm yellow here, which is um, very vibrant, but here I'm trying to pick up these richer colours. Now that the paper is getting drier, I can purposefully put in some marks that I don't want to run everywhere. I want them to be quite specific in their position. If you do think it's getting too dry, just try wetting your brush first before blobbing more water on. If That's if you want it to be specific. If you think, oh, I don't like the marks I'm making, which quite often when, when you're painting, you just don't like the shape of what's going on. The good thing about watercolour is just watering the paper around it, and then it'll just run and settle into its own little area. You see how I've kept areas that are lighter um, and the, the leaf doesn't have such light areas? This is typically a good thing to do when you're painting watercolour. You need to see where your lights are so you, must, so you can save them from getting too dark too quickly. So if there's any harsh areas here, I'm just going to clean my brush, dry it off and rub it a little. Rub, don't poke or push or stomp. Just rub gently and lift that colour up a little bit. So I'm okay with that for now and I might just leave that one be. Now I'm re-wetting this leaf because even though I wet it earlier, it, the paper has dried a little bit too much for my liking. Remember the tip from last week's lesson, try to be brave. I know it can be scary, but try to be brave and be a little bit bolder with how much water you actually are using in your painting. Now I'm putting this leaf in, oh sorry, this leaf here, and you'll see just as much as um, I spoke about before just as much as I put a little bit of warm yellow onto the paper it just runs it's very nice and light and the tint of the yellow just spreads uh, so remember that about the nature of yellow think of it if you can't remember it easily just think of it as yellow loves to go on trips I've got the travel bug I'm going to keep a lighter area here just to show a bit of light on my leaf but everywhere else I'm going. Now as you can see I'm just doing the yellow and then I'm going to come back in with the darker colours, the darker spots 
it's always good for you with watercolour because it's basically a, a transparent way of painting in its essence uh, because the nature of watercolour paint can be transparent. Uh, it's best to think in terms of light to dark and if it needs to get stronger or darker you can build it up whereas you can easily make a painting look pasty and heavy if you come in really early with really strong darks. I'm not set in my way of painting because I just like to enjoy it so whatever works for you but in general it does help to go from light to dark. So as I'm going now I'm going to draw the centre of the it's still a bit wet so I hope you're getting used to your paintings being too wet to still touch. Um, it, it really does just build up over time with your confidence and your experience. I might start putting a few little dots in. See how wet the page is? Those dots are going to be barely visible so they're going to be quite subtle but I'm okay with that because up close I don't know if you can see it in focus there's lots of little dots so I'm okay with just dotting a lot I might even put a little bit of burnt sienna in because they're going to stain it a little bit darker Remember as well, even though you're beginning, or perhaps some of you aren't beginners, you're more experienced, but always try to push yourself to go a little bit into that scary place of, oh, I think that's too strong. You know, the worst thing that can happen is that it may dry too dark and you can re-wet it and lift it back off. It's just watercolour paint. And the more daring that you can be while you're doing these little practices, the more likely you're going to improve faster because the experimentation leads to confidence and you really, sometimes you, you can benefit the most with watercolour from just being really confident and just throwing things in and seeing what happens. Um, I had years of very tight painting, which I'm sure you can sort of see in my style because I I still do have quite a controlling style but um, I, I'm, I can honestly say to you if if it hadn't been for the parameters of my work needing to look exactly a certain way my watercolors would be much looser now because the more I paint for fun the looser I'm getting. Now I'm just going to go into my dark brown here to put on that spot because I've already put a, a burnt sienna base it is quite pretty but I'm trying to really dull it down a bit to a bit of a dead spot. The page is drying can you tell that um, not only because I'm using brown which isn't a great traveller remember our lazy traveller doesn't want to get off the train um, but brown is a muddy colour it's made from magenta blue and yellow all mixed or any of your opposites which again are all three colours or all, all three primaries mixed so it's a heavy colour, the pigment. A lot of our earthy colours come from soil and rocks. So this one I'm going to work on a little bit down the track with something going on there. The last leaf I'm going to do this green one with the dabs of a darker green sitting in this quite yellowy, like lemony yellow leaf. So I haven't wet this area yet, so I'm going to wet it quite heavily first. And then I'm going into my cool yellow. This is actually my primary yellow, but um, and you can watch how quickly it runs. The hue is very strong. And because it's yellow, it's very light, very, very quickly and easily spread across the paper. Going into my lime green. And that's not giving me too much of a limey look, so I'll throw more in. There, so as we go, I'm going to get a little bit more green, but also because I don't want it to look as pretty as this green is going to give me the colour, it's too too nice. So what do I do? I murky up the yellow by adding a bit of ochre, yellow ochre. And that still gives me a yellow feel, 
but it's now muddied it up. I don't have that really pretty feeling. So I'm going to add dark green. I know that this green won't travel too far because it is a heavier green based on very, very blue green. And blue doesn't travel as well as yellow. So I know in my head straight away that, oh, I can really throw this down. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Doesn't matter that one area is wetter than another, just means that it'll dry a little bit softer in its shape. Now, while this one is drying, what I want to do is pull out a little bit of color. So you need a brush that will give you a tip, a nice um, point, sharp point. And I'm just gonna wet it a little bit so that it, the point sticks together. It's not been fully dipped in the water. And what I want to do is I want to run my brush along. I hope that's showing up, but I'm, I'm actually going back to the paper a bit here. And I'll do it a little bit down here as well. And along the middle. Gee, I've been painting off the picture. Sorry. I'm okay with these three, but um, going back to this one, it still looks far too light. So this is a good thing to do as well, teaching you that you don't have to get it right the first time. Once it's, now that has, it's, it's almost dry, it's still got a bit of moisture. Um, and this is a good tip. Do you realize that you can tell how wet the paper is by how cold it is? So if the page is normal temperature, yes, it's dry. If it still feels a bit cooler, it's still got moisture in it. And if it's very cool, then yes, it's quite um, damp. You shouldn't actually be touching that, but that's okay. Now, what we're gonna do now is just a tint. And that means that this whole leaf here, I left not as strong or dark or as colorful as I'd wanted. You can see here, it's a much more orangey looking leaf than I've ended up with. And also there's no contrast in areas between this leaf and this leaf. So what I'm gonna do is what we call a tint, which is just when you get a stronger color. So say I've got my warm red here, I'm gonna pop it down here and really absorb it into my brush. You want a fully loaded brush, which means you want it to be absorbing, and I've got a little hair or something there. Uh, you want it to be as fully absorbed as you can. And I'm just going to lay that down. And if I can go, here goes my wobbly hand again. See, see how I'm, I'm kind of brushing it over. I'm not rubbing what's there. I'm pretty much laying down a coat over the top. And it's quite light. It's, it's uneven, obviously, with my wobbly hand, but it is quite subtle. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. If you are a heavy painter, this is the time to hold your brush all the way back towards the end because that relieves how much weight you have pressing to the paper. So what I want to do now is actually exaggerate because these aren't overlapping, but I want these two. So I'm going to go into my mulberry sort of colour Add in a little bit of my my orange and I'm just going to run along this part here onto my underside leaf and I'm, I'm taking into consideration the bulge or the uh, con convex which one's up convex shape of the leaves itself so that's um, giving that a little bit of weight. And I might soften that off a little bit with just plain water in my brush. So if you find that that's too heavy, which I'm kind of half thinking it is, I'm just interrupting the edge by wetting it with a clean brush. 
and that then just gives me that little bit of weight. Now this one is drying, which is what I wanted, because where I took the paint back out to make it more white, I'm going to use that same technique, but with the green mixed with a little bit of the yellow ochre. So it's not a pretty green, it's just a little bit duller, but it is darker than what's there. And I'm going to go up closer to where I've rubbed that paint out so it's whiter. And by the way, this is still cool, which means it's still got a little bit of moisture in it, but it's not heavy. And I'm just trying to give the tiniest little bit of white. I, I, I should be doing this smoothly. Sorry, this is my jittery hand doing this, but that's okay. Um, that's okay still lucky that I can paint and now I'm doing it again and you see how by deepening the color so increasing the tone the depth of color around it I've just made that look more outstanding where I pulled the color up I'm going to give it a little bit of a, of a break where the central vein is but just press along this edge and then I really don't mind too much what's happening on this side uh, as long as I've got that central vein in there and there we have our little study um, it's a really fun thing to do and you can learn so much about painting I'm just going to speed through now and do some touch-ups and refinement with the technique that I'm going to introduce to you in two weeks time which is the dry brush technique which isn't talked about too much on in the world of watercolor but I, I actually use the dry brush technique every day at my work um, painting for many years and I found it incredibly good to have in your toolbox for watercolor so I'll, I'll do that now Thanks for all my subscribers and new subscribers. I hope you're getting something good out of it. Let's be creative. See you next time. Bye.